guys this is Shay Jose and today I'm coming back at you with another tutorial remake uh, this time we will be looking at remaking the lead for the track or the remix that Anima and uh, Cashin did for Jimmy Jules called My City's on Fire and if you don't know what that lead sound sounds like I'll let you hear it now <laughs> And in the original, it sounds like this. So let's get started. Now, I think this is actually these guys are actually running uh, another another sort of um, uh, layer underneath because I can hear kind of another saw wave. But uh, this will probably get you about ninety percent of the way there. Now there is a little bit of processing that needs to be done outside of Serum, uh, but we'll break down how this has been done. So to start off with, just initialize a new version of uh, a new instance of Serum, uh, and what you would do is just put uh, two uh, one oscillator uh, to be a um, saw wave, and the other oscillator to be basic shape. So it's a sorry uh, basic CW, which is under analog under uh, basic underscore C CJW. Now the trick with this uh, sound that uh, after listening to it a, a few times was actually trying to get. Uh, there's a little bit of raspiness in that sound, so there's a little bit of noise, and there's quite a lot of um, LFO style movement in the in the way that the synth is actually running, which kind of gives it that analog feel. Um, so in order to do that, uh, basically what we ended up doing is actually doing some uh, external uh, parameters down here, which we'll cover in a minute. Uh, so what you would do is just initialize uh, your two uh, two oscillators, uh, put the saw wave on oscillator A to negative one. Oscillator B, uh, change the waveform to about this shape, so it's about 83 on the uh, on the position here. So you should see this kind of this kind of shape um, appear in oscillator B. Uh, set them both to three unison, and what you want to do is actually just detune them slightly. The first one's actually is pretty much uh, detuned just a little bit off center, while the second one is a little bit more unison. Um, what you want to do after that is actually go to the white noise and under here on the analog, uh, choose the ARP white. This is actually going to give it a little bit of raspiness that's actually sitting there uh, on the top of the synthesizer, so you can actually hear. Um, set the level to zero. Uh, and what you want to do is actually direct both of these out uh, to the filter section. Um, what we'll do is we'll move down the bottom. So the envelopes, you need to just uh, set the envelopes as you see here. So the attack at 0 0.5, which is default. Uh, increase the decay and the sustain. Um, and also the release. So the release is quite high at about 971 milliseconds. Um, on envelope two, um, you want to kind of do a sharper, um, uh, a sharper sustain. So we are running. Uh, leave this to as default. The attack, uh, the hold at default. The K is at 1.71 seconds. Uh, no sustain and the release at 1.08. So this is actually going to let that sound kind of drift out a little bit more as as it goes through. Uh, moving on, uh, nothing on LFO one. On LFO two, um, we've just changed the waveform slightly here. Um, I'm not really using any of the BPM match in here as such. However, what I have done is actually um, I'm using the uh, shape of the LFO on the wet position of the oscillator B. What this is actually doing is this will actually move that waveform slightly to give it a little bit more movement. Um, as these guys actually use quite a lot of analog gear, um, just kind of trying to recreate that sort of uh, movement that you will get and that warmth that you will get in analog gear. So I'll let you hear what that sounds like. See if I can just turn oscillator A close. And then on the recreation, so as you can see there, that waveform is actually moving quite a bit. Um, we've just uh, uh, slightly adjusted the, the uh, finesse in there. Uh, so if we've put it up by 7 cents, just a little bit. Um, and then really, that's really it on this side. The only other thing that we've done here is in the LFO, we're actually... Um, routing the LFO shape into the cutoff, so named you low 12, and only open to about oh, about 40%. Now, half of this end is actually made up from the way that the cutoff is actually automated, which we'll cover afterwards. Um, 
But let's move on to the effects section. Uh, pretty standard. The effects is just a little bit of a dip. Uh, here is a little bit of a notch filter there at around, I would say about uh, 32 hertz. Yeah, thereabouts. Uh, 3.2 kilohertz, sorry. Um, a little bit of filter. Uh, hyper dimension, not too much. Uh, a little bit of chorus, a little bit of distortion as well with a stomp box, a compressor, and the reverb. Now, we're running the compressor in multiband. This kind of gives it a little bit more of that. Um, sorry, in um, in multiband, yeah. Uh, this gives it a little bit more of a grittier sound that you actually hear. So, uh, without it, it will sound like this. With it. So... That's pretty much it on the effects section there. Uh, the only other thing that you want to do is actually make sure that the um, the noise, uh, we're not using the subject, you can turn that off, but the noise uh, section is actually being filtered as well by uh, this filter here. So make sure that this is actually clicked on and rerouted. Um, you want to make sure that this is set to mono and legato, uh, set to always, and just put this at about 36 uh, milliseconds. Now, uh, the MIDI pattern is actually really simple. Uh, what we're doing is actually just sliding the notes in between and F sharp uh, up and down to kind of get that sliding of the notes up and down. Um, the only other thing that we're doing externally here is I've rolled off some of the highs um, on this synth uh, because their particular sound is not very uh, is not very concentrated on the on the highs of of the uh, frequency spectrum. Um, it, it, you can actually hear that it's the, they've basically rolled off uh, a lot of the highs and it's kind of some that uh, mid mid highs sort of area. Um, I've added a little bit of overdrive there, uh, not not too much, about twenty five percent in dynamics. Now the other thing that I've done in here because I can actually hear that there's the, the white note seems to be um, I guess has a little bit of movement as well in there is I added a little bit of erosion. And I've mapped the frequency of that erosion, so you can. But basically, what you can, what you can do is just grab an LFO, uh, and then map. So you can hit, the, hit this, and then map it to the frequency down the bottom here, um, and then just adjust it the f how quickly that frequency uh, is going to move uh, on that erosion plugin between 55% and 100% and the depth, which is basically how high it's actually going to run in. So I'm only having it at about 22%. The last thing is just adding an amp in there just to give a little bit more grittiness uh, and setting this to mono. So uh, you can copy these settings. I'll have this um, uh, s this whole rack actually available um, for you guys to download if you're part of my Patreon program. Um, last but not least, which is probably the most important thing about this uh, sound is the way it's actually been automated. So what they're actually doing is they're playing around with the um, with a cutoff quite a bit. Now, this is just a, a quick automation that I've done here. Um, so what we can do is I can show you with and without. So with the automation, you can actually see that the cutoff, the filter cutoff is opening up and down as we're sliding through the notes. So this sounds like this. <laughs> And if we were to disable that auto, so if you were to listen to this without the automation, it'll sound something like this. It doesn't really have the same sort of effect. So if you really want to get kind of that um, effect that they're getting, uh, it's really about playing with the cutoff. So. And now what you can do is just make sure that this is all armed. So you have the recording, these two buttons at the top here, your track is armed, and now you can actually record the automation over the top. So I'll just start at about here. Something like that. And it's a huge difference to the way the sound uh, sounds. Um, so just one last comparison between the original track and the remake. And the remake. And putting it all together. So anyways guys, that's uh, a quick little remake, like you will have to play around with the automation to get it exactly the same as the guys had it, but um, this should give you a good, 
basis to start off with. Um, yeah, if you enjoy the video, give it a thumbs up, and don't forget you can download this preset if you're part of my Patreon uh, program. Uh, more details.